What's up guys, Pippi Deed here and welcome to episode 101 of my road to Manchester City. We're actually going to be doing a bunch of SBCs today and opening some packs. Uh, there's currently a new team of the season out, I think it's the Bundesliga, and we're going to try and see if we can pack any of those guys. But we're also going to be playing in the daily knockout tournament final because at the time of me recording this, um, what's his name, Sigurdsson was still an option to get as a uh, tournament reward and I wanted to get him because uh, he was actually a pretty decent card and I could also use him in SBC if I didn't end up using him at all which is probably going to be the case if I'm honest but yeah we're starting off by doing a few SBCs over here I'm doing the marquee matchups I'm also doing a couple of more leagues I'm doing like a lot of league SBCs here I'm not completing any but I am completing most of it and you'll see that it's going to actually take some time as we go through them so while we go through them, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about City in general, in real life, because we've actually been going through a bunch of changes in the space of just a few days recently. Uh, a couple of days ago, the purge started at City, essentially. We got rid of, obviously we got rid of Zabaleta a while back, but uh, we already knew that. But like just out of the blue, they start tweeting saying, goodbye, Sanya, goodbye, uh, cliche goodbye caballero and I'm like what's going on I'm reading this while I'm on my lunch break at work and I'm thinking what is going on I just see these tweets on my timeline and yeah Guardiola isn't messing around he's getting rid of the dead weight and he's bringing in a bunch of players like I'm hearing rumors left right and center we signed Bernardo Silva from Monaco uh, we were rumored to get him for a while now but Guardiola just said let's complete this deal right now and they did uh, then uh, we're still rumored to get a couple of more Monaco players like Mendy and stuff like that. But I'm also hearing like other names too. Uh, what are the names that we are? I'm hearing. Well, Monaco is mainly the team we're, we're raiding. Actually, Ederson from Benfica, I think he is the goalkeeper. We're rumored to get him, but like they're like on it, like they're not messing around at City, and it just came out of nowhere. But I'm actually excited for it. I've been saying for a while now that we should have got rid of the dead weight stuff like. Like, Sanya and Clichy, they're not horrible players. They're just not good enough for City. Caballero, that one, I understand why he's gone. But I felt kind of bad because when he did play, he wasn't all that bad. He he won us um, the cup against Liverpool a few years ago. And honestly, he's had a better season than Bravo, in my opinion. Now, I might be biased because he's Argentinian and Bravo's Chilean, but... Personally, I think that Bravo's had a nightmare this season. But it is what it is. Guardiola's obviously not going to get rid of Bravo in, after his first year. So I, that does make sense. But yeah, Sanya, Clichy, I understand that. What I don't understand is how Kolarov is somehow still at the club. Because if anything, out of all three of those, Kolarov is the worst. But once again, that's only my opinion. So I don't know what Guardiola is thinking. Maybe he just forgot about Kolarov and said, oh, I, I forgot to throw him in the list. But I honestly don't know why Kolarov is still there. But it's looking good, guys. We got another Silva in the midfield. It's going to be interesting, actually, to see what happens with that. Because if, obviously, Silva, I'm guessing he's going to be a starter. That means someone's going to have to get dropped. Because if we have Aguero, Jesus, starting, then we have David Silva, De Bruyne, Fernandinho and Yaya, right, that right there is six players on the pitch. Then we have to include the goalie, obviously, Bravo. And that puts us at seven, gives us room for four players, which I'm guessing would be the defenders. That means there's no room for Bernardo Silva to start unless we drop someone. Now, who gets dropped from that? I really don't know. And I forgot Sané and Sterling. What's going to happen with them? Honestly, we're going to have a pretty in-depth squad from now on. And we still haven't even finished signing people, so... Honestly, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I can't think of anybody in the starting lineup right now that I dropped. Fernandinho and Yaya are very solid. De Bruyne, I don't even have to say anything. He's just been amazing this season. Aguero and Jesus, that partnership has been pretty good recently. There's not really anybody you can drop. So the only options I see is that he does drop one of those people. Or he switches to a three at the back, which would give room for us to have another midfielder in there. But... Three at the back? I don't know if we can do that. But I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see what what happens because it's going to be uh, a tough decision in my eyes. But maybe in Guardiola's eyes, it's just like, oh, I got this sorted. Whatever. I j I'll just drop David Silver or something. I don't know. 
Personally, I think uh, Yaya Torre, he's been really good this season, but I just don't know. Maybe what he does is uh, he'll have Yaya as a bench player and he'll bring him on like a rotation player. I don't know. We'll wait and see. But I'm really excited for the future because it looks like we're not messing around. We're getting rid of players that just aren't useful and we're signing players that are going to help us in the long run. But yeah, that's pretty much it for City and we're still doing the SBCs here. Well, we're not doing the SBCs. We're opening up the packs from the SBCs over here. And this is basically what I was saying when I did that huge episode, uh, the huge pack opening episode last episode. We get a walkout in this pack over here and it is a blue. And I see the Spain flag drop. Oh, I actually recorded this the day before the Premier League went out of packs. So when I saw the Spain drop down, I said, who's in the Spain uh, who's in the BPL team this season in Spanish? So I, then I immediately clicked into my head, Diego Costa or Marcos Alonso. Well, you know what? I completely had forgotten that a couple of days earlier, the Pro League SPC uh, got put into packs. And we ended up getting Pozuelo, who's a walkout. And I was a little bit um, frustrated with that. But it is what it is. Still a good, decent team this season, 89 rated. Uh, he goes for discard, which is crazy for a team this season walkout. But that's just how the ratings are this year. And I, I'm going to hold on to him because if I, I still have hope. I like to believe in EA, even though I probably shouldn't, that further down the line there's going to be an SBC that requires team in the seasons. But it's probably a bit of a long shot. But yeah, I'm going to hold on to him because there's no point of me selling him for minimal coins, which is like 20k, which is his lowest. Might as well hold on. To see what happens and if nothing does end up happening we'll just discard it along the other team this seasons that we invested in but yeah opening up the rest of the packs and like i was saying last episode i said there would be a pretty much a sequel i guess you could say to the pack opening because from all the players i got in those packs i'd be able to do more team sbcs and open up more packs and that is basically what's happening here you saw me complete a bunch of more team sbcs i also completed uh, the marquee matchups. We opened up the packs over here, and while I didn't get what I was hoping to get, a BPL team of the season, I did end up getting one team of the season from the Pro League, and I think we also got my Tweety in there too, as you see me sell him. So overall, not bad considering we paid minimal coin, minimal coins to get all those packs, but would have hoped for a little bit better. But then again, I go ahead and look at the team that we have right now, and can I really complain after we got Conte? <sighs> Probably not. But we head into the final. And you come across this guy over here, a 4-3-2-1, what a team, Red Hazard, Cl Clivert, Bale, Team of the Year, Cruz, which is a little bit of a weird selection, but I think he had him in there because he was more um, defensive, I want to say. Cruz is more defensive, isn't he? I don't know. It's still a weird selection, but he did have Conte in there, so I guess that's going to kind of help. And early on, we would have the first chance of the game right there, and just bad, bad decision making by me right there. Should have... Uh, Probably got in a little further with Martial and shot with his left, but I ended up trying to finesse it. It was just a bad idea. I probably actually should have played the sweaty past the sun who was right there, but I didn't. And that was actually a pretty tough half. As you saw right there, we head into the second half. 0-0. Zero, zero. Overall in the first half, this guy uh, started off better. He had a couple of chances. He didn't really get any shots on target because what when it came to him shooting, my defenders would block it. So I did get a little bit lucky there. But in the first half, I was pretty shaky, and he started off well. However, in the second half, I got myself back into it. I got a goal with Sun, and in the 67th minute around there, I went ahead, paused it, and we're going to go ahead and do some subs. But that actually ended up being the game. We ended up holding on to the 1-0 lead, a very, very tough game. Our opponent, like I said, started off well in the first half, was a little bit unlucky at times, but I also felt like we defended well. And we got that goal, we held on to it, and we got the Sigurdsson and a thousand coins. And after that, he actually messaged me, and it turns out I've played this guy before. Because when I when go check the message, I saw that he, there was old messages from him. And I said, wow, it's this guy again. I couldn't believe it. I actually played this guy a while back. I think he was in a, a daily knockout tournament as well, where I think I went up like 2-0 or something like that, and he rage quit. And... I. I, I just didn't think I'm anything of it. But he messaged me after the game saying, oh, sorry for the DC. Uh, it was time for me to play Halo. And I said, haha, no worries, man. 
and uh, he messaged me in the final, and I couldn't believe it was him again. I'm not going to lie, this time he gave me a really, really tough game. I was a little bit lucky in that game, but after that first time I played him, I didn't think he'd give me that tough of a game because I took a 2-0 lead, he quit, and I felt like it was a pretty easy game, but in the final right there, he gave me a very tough game, so... Uh, I'm pretty glad I got, somehow got away with the win there, but yeah, that guy seems like a cool guy. Didn't send me a rage message, so fair play to him. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been episode 101. My name is Pippi Deed, and I'm out.